Hi, Mr. Sologar here. I'm going to hope to, in this video, explain what spectral lines are and how they provide evidence for the origin of the universe. So one of the questions that we have is, how do we study stars when they're so far away? We study the energy that is emitted by the stars and waves to determine their temperature and their composition. There's all different types of energy. They have different wavelengths. The longest wavelengths are the radio waves. The shortest wavelengths are the gamma rays. We're only able to see a very small portion of the electromagnetic spectrum in the middle called the visible light. And that's what we are going to focus on today. When we take white light and pass it through a prism, we can separate that light into different wavelengths, red, orange, yellow, green, blue, violet. And if we have an incandescent light bulb, we would get a continuous spectrum. However, if we pass it through a cool gas, we end up with breaks in the spectrum and these are what we call spectral lines. There are emission lines and absorption lines. This is a continuous spectrum. The hot gas would only produce specific lines, emission lines based upon what is in this gas. And then this is a light passing through cold gas. The gas is absorbing some wavelengths and that results in blank spots in the spectrum of the absorption lines. When we study stars, we use something called a spectroscope, which is going to magnify the light. And then we will use a prism to separate the light into its various wavelengths of color. Specific elements cause a very specific pattern of breaks in the spectrum. The pattern of breaks can then be used to identify the substance. This allows us to identify the substances that are in far away stars. So here's some examples of spectral lines from hydrogen, helium, and carbon. You'll notice that they're all different. They have very specific spectral lines based upon their composition. We focus a lot on hydrogen spectral lines because most main sequence stars are using hydrogen as a fuel. Hydrogen atoms are pulled together under tremendous force of gravity. They smash together and lighter elements of hydrogen combine to make heavier elements of helium. So we focus a lot on the pattern of lines from hydrogen when we're studying faraway stars. This is meant to represent an experiment in which you take a look at light that is not moving, and then you take a look at light that is moving towards you and away from you to see what happens to the spectral lines. The middle is at rest, meaning that the light is not moving. The top one shows you what happens when a light source moves towards you. The same spectral lines show up, however, they are shifted slightly towards the blue end. This is called the Doppler effect. On the bottom, we have light that is moving away from you. The same two lines right here in the yellow are these two lines, which shifted a little bit more towards the red end. This is the Doppler red shift. So the question is, what happens when we look at stars and galaxies to the spectral lines from the hydrogen? This is a laboratory reference where the light is not moving. What we notice is that a star will show somewhat of a red shift. And as we go farther and farther and farther away from Earth, we see a bigger red shift. So the question is, what does this mean? This would have to mean that the universe is expanding, and if it's expanding, then at one time it must have been all together in a single point of all mass and all energy, and the beginning of this expansion is therefore called the Big Bang. Not this, maybe something more like this, or something like this. I hope this helps you to better understand spectral lines and how they support the Big Bang Theory.